welcome the Father, we welcome the Son, we welcome the Holy Ghost in our midst, to our midst, we welcome the Father, we welcome the Son, we welcome the Holy Ghost in Amen. Almighty Father, we are grateful because you are happy with us. You gathered us together for yourself. Lord Jesus, you say where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. You have come. You have come prepared to do eternal work in the lives of your people. Oh Lord, look to the face of everyone. Stand by everyone in the hall and outside the hall. Nobody here is a stranger to you. You created them all. I'm praying your presence and power will be released upon all of them. In Jesus' name. I am asking that their eyes will open. The scales in their eyes will fall down. Particularly in this conference, where we're talking about dry bones, it's very painful because of the state of your church. Actually, dry bones in the valley. Lord, we want you to wake up your church. We want you to quicken your church. As the bones became a mighty army, May, oh Lord, the church rise up to be a mighty army in this end time. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Give life to your word in the ears and hearts of your children. Inspire it in the mouth of your preacher. In Jesus' name we pray. You can be seated. Reviving the dry bones of biblical truth and holiness in Christ's church. Reviving the dry bones of biblical truth and holiness in Christ's church. This means we have noticed that the truth is not thriving in Christ's church. When I say in Christ's church, in a greater percent of it. In fact, almost to have said near a hundred percent. We are saying holiness has become a strange thing in Christ's church. But truth and holiness is what God says he is. Jesus says, I am the truth. About the Holy Ghost, the Bible calls him the spirit of truth. Even of God the Father, the Bible says he is the God of truth. Now, if truth is no more there, then the presence of God is not there. In Christ's church. Christ's church, I'm talking about the local churches. The physical body of Christ in the world. Holiness is another name of God. He said, I am holy. That is his nature. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, 
the, the three persons in the Godhead are holy. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Of course, the one God is holy. Now, if holiness is not in the church, then that church does not know God. Because God's nature is holy. But that is the true state now in the churches of God in the world. What I am saying is reviving the dry bones of biblical truth and holiness in Christ's church. First, I will start with you. Then, I and you will go to the world and do it in the churches of Christ. Thank you for you who are in truth, in righteousness. We will walk this walk together. It is not the work of one person. We're reading Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Can you see? The dry bones of Israel here in the valley refers to the dry faith of Christians in the world. Dry bones in the open valley shows that the people had died for a long time because they were very dry. Yes. And this is the state of many in the church today who have a name that they are alive, but are actually dead. Yes. This is the truth concerning many individuals who call on the name of the Lord. It is the truth concerning many local assemblies, many denominations, many Christian ministers, in the world. Yes, many have just a name, but they are dead. They are not alive. The truth is not in them. They are dry. In fact, very dry. Many churches live by name only. They are dry. Very dry. Yes, very dry. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, the Bible tells us in verse 1, saying, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, This thing said, He that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art day. Can you see? God is the one saying it. People don't know that the man called their pastor is a dead man. Many, some know, but many don't know that the president of the denomination is a dead man. Many don't know that the bishop of their church is a dead man. God knows because he is destitute of truth and holiness is absent. They don't know that the choir members, even including the choir master, are dead people. They are not alive. Why? The truth is not known. If you look at them, look at their dresses, Look at their lifestyle, you will know, as God describes it, that you just have a name, that you are in the choir, but you are a dead person. 
You just have a name that you are an usher in the church, that you are a children teacher. Oh, that you are walking in the media. You are walking way again, but you are a date man. Because you, truth is not in you, and the holiness of God is absent. It is from truth you become holy, because the truth sanctifies. Sanctify them by thy truth, and by your word. Thy word is truth. But when this truth is not in you, how do you become holy? It's not possible. So, that is it. Now, I will talk to you on number one. Dry bones in the valley. Dry bones in the valley. Point number two. Only God can revive the dead church. Only God can revive the dead church. And in my point number three, God requires human cooperation. God requires human cooperation. Now let's go to point number one. Dry bones in the valley. Ezekiel chapter 37. I read again verse 1 and verse 2. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 and 2. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. What a cathedral full of people. What a church full of people. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Very many in the congregation. Very dry, all of them. Truth left that congregation for so long a time. In fact, for centuries. For centuries. Very dry. The dry bones were seen in open valley as the lives of those professing to be Christians are being washed openly and criticized in the media of nations. Go to read papers. They will tell you what a bishop did. A bishop slept with a member of his church. They will tell you uh, uh, this person, this man of God was caught with drugs. They will tell you uh, this other, ma uh, this minister of the gospel, uh, they opened his car and the head of a human being was in his boot. This is everywhere. And yet, they go by the name of the Lord. The bones were very dry. This shows the state they are in. And the time they had taken to be in that state. Very long time. This scripture pictures the state of the universal church of Christ. At this hour. It's a concern. It talks about the church you belong to. I think so. I think you must agree with it. That this is the condition of the assembly you belong to. Not only just the local church, but the denomination you fall into in the world. What is it? To show this, this thing, the dryness, what does it mean? It means iniquity abounds. And the love of many towards God has waxed cold. Look at it in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was called. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was called. Is that not so in the church? 
Is that not so in your church? What do you now say of late coming? Come. Do men go to church again? Is it not left to the women? In all churches. Because there's no love of God in the men. They are looking for other things, not God. Hence, the families are suffering. Because the man who is the head of the family, who should bring God to the family, is not interested in God. Then, the wife and the children are just struggling among themselves. They may not have anything to do with God. Or do it weakly, be very weak in it. The love of many has worth called. Iniquity abounds in the church, among the youths, among the men, among the women. What do we talk about the dressing of the women? Is that not iniquity? Even to the dressing of the pastor's wife, the bishop's wife, the reverend's wife. Is that not iniquity? Is there fear of God in their dressing? So, you can see the state of the church we are in. Number two, they do not want to retain the knowledge of God in their hearts. They don't want it. Don't talk to me about God. In the office, when you bring God, ah, no, 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 don't talk about God here. I am here to make money. And those who, are, who have gone to other countries, other nations, are not taking God seriously because if they do, they will not get the money they came for. So God is secondary. Look at it in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 8 to 11. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 8 to 11. Now, go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us small things. Prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. You see them? They don't want God. Don't teach us the correct thing. Pastor, you hear? And some of these churches have the right to employ their pastors and to expel their pastors. If the pastors preach too strongly, they say, ah, why are you doing this? Why do you want to disturb us here? No, you won't be our pastor again. They write to the headquarters and tell them there that this man cannot be here. They don't understand what he is doing. And because the headquarters are all together like them, they have bribed them up with money and other things, or they are practicing the same witchcraft, they carry the man off. Leave this place. They don't want you. What did I do? I say you should leave that place. Where are they taking him to? They are taking him to a remote village. That is what is happening. Prophesy unto us smooth things. Things that will just be laughing, laughing, laughing. Hello! Move on! That's what we want. Don't disturb our conscience. That's the state of the church. Both the men and the women. That's how they live now. That's what they want now. In the book of, yes, Romans, chapter 1, verse 21 to 32. Romans, chapter 1, 
verse 21 to 32. It goes, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also, the men, leaving the natural use of the women, bond in their lust one toward another, men with men, walking that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them, uh, gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Human beings, they say they don't want God in their knowledge. They don't want God to interfere with them. Leave me alone. And God really left them alone. For God will not force them. God, your brothers and sisters, your relations, are asking God to leave them alone. Your children, are asking God to leave them alone. And God is actually leaving them alone. In fact, the pastors and bishops, the reverends, right reverends, the senior pastors, are asking God to leave them alone. Don't interfere with what I do in the church. God, leave me alone. And God really left them alone. Now, see what they do. They have turned the church into homosexuals. They have turned the church to lesbian. Now they preach now in the church that you can marry a man, being a man. As a woman, you can marry a woman. In fact, if you want to marry a dog, you can go ahead. And they are too so serious about it that they have used the government to back them up that if anybody says otherwise, the government should deal with them. And in fact, they have become even offended at the Bible. Who talks about homosexuality, lesbianism? Why must we talk about it? And is it in California that we were told that the Bible was taken to court? Because the Bible is disturbing their conscience. God really left them alone. So you see the state of the church that they are left alone with reprobate minds doing those things that are not convenient they kill they do what sacrifice bury things in the altar hang things at their door that when you come in you can't go back again deceive you with all ways lying turning the truth of god into a lie making promises where promises don't and are not supposed to be there that's what is going on that's the state of the church. What about the youth? They swoon in the streets in various iniquities. 
Youth on the street, naked. Youth on the street. Do they go to church on Sunday? No. It's for old men. In some Western world now, it's youth don't go to church. And it's gradually coming to Africa. In, on Sunday, it's time to go and play football. It's time to go and watch film. What about God? Leave me alone. That is the situation. It's a terrible matter. We are, see the distress we are in actually. See, how does God feel? Is he interested to condemn people that he has gotten enough now to condemn? Is he interested to destroy people? As I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the date of the wicked. They, but they are dying. That's the state of the church. The ministers teach for money and do not know God themselves. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 8, the ministers, they teach for money. All is money now. No money, ah, then forget it. <clears throat> Even for a conference like this, some will say, if I come, will I get some money there? Because everything is money. Everything now. No, you will hear the word of eternal life. Which eternal life? I'm not ready for that one. I have it already. At most, that's what they will tell you. Because they, they don't concern themselves with God. They don't. God is gone in their lives. God is gone in their lives. God is gone from their ways. Yes. Yeah. In Jeremiah chapter 2, I read verse 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Can you see? They are not even seeking God. They are not looking for God. All these pastors of signs and wonders, ask them to come and hear the word. They are not ready. Because it's going to condemn their conscience. It's going to affect them. They won't do what they're doing. They won't tell those lies anymore. So they don't want to come. They're too big to come. I am a bishop. Who is that person that you said to come? I hear from who? I hear from who? Oh, do you have a message that I should come and preach? Otherwise, I'm not coming. No. It's only God that can work on such people. Only God that can work on such people. You see? The people love to have it so. This is another thing. The people love to have it so. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31, For I have heard a voice, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Your pastors are not true. You even know, is it not the pastor that committed immorality with you? Is it not this your pastor that you committed abortion for? And you're still there. And he's still going out with you. And comes to the pulpit. You say, right on. Quite terrible. My people love to have it so. The Lord spoke and told you false preachers. He named them. He brought it. We wrote it out for you in books. We spoke them. They are there in the internet. But who bothers? Now that you don't bother, are you really thinking of heaven? Do you bother about life after death? Do you bother? Are you concerning yourself with God? 
Are you going to this church for God or for yourself? Otherwise, there is no truth there. You are a witness yourself to the treachery that is going on there. You even heard that this person that died, that one that died, it was so clear, is part of the sacrifice of that church. You saw it. You witnessed it. You heard it. But you're there. Are you thinking of heaven? But my people love to have it so. This is where God feels it. It's surprise. See the state of the church. And yet the people like it so. How many are interested in the narrow way? It's too narrow for them. It's too hard for them. They want cheap, cheap thing. Not this one that you have to suffer. You have to confess all your sins. Ah! You want to go and do, uh, you have to do restitution. You have to pray. You have to fast. No. Holy water is there. You don't need, you don't need fasting when you are using water. Anointing oil for double portion is there. You don't need to go and be confessing sin when you use anointing oil. Handkerchief and apron. It's there. You just need to soak it and drink and the matter is over. Where are you going again to be disturbing yourself? My people love it so. To keep their sins and never come to God. What a morning and heart aches. The few godly and true ministers are in for the state of the church. We, we sorrow constantly. We lament for the state of the church. Look at it in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-four. Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-four, verse fifteen to twenty-eight. Verse fifteen to twenty-eight. It goes. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord. And have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. This king feared God. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had given me a book. And Shaphan read before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the weights of the Lord, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahiakam the son of Shephan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shephan, the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the kings, of the kings, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the weights of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvat, the son of Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect, and she answered them. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Tell ye the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place. And upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the curses that are written in the book. Which they have read before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me. And have burnt incense unto other gods. That they might provoke me to anger. 
with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. No surely nobody is going to heaven in these churches. All of them are going to hell. All of them are going to hell. All of them and their ministers and their bishops, all are going to hell. Hell has enlarged itself waiting for them. God will never spare a sinner. The soul that sinned, it shall die. Though jo hands join in hands, the wicked shall not go unpunished. The Bible tells us the wicked shall be cast into hell and all nations that forget God. And as long as these churches have, forget God, have, have forgotten God, as long as these ministers have forgotten God, all of them shall go to hell. How many people were saved in the days of Noah? When people could live almost to a thousand years? Eight people. Everybody say eight people. Because of the anger of God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the angry God. So, alas, brethren, our people are going to hell. The ministers are going to hell. The bishops are going to hell. The choir members are going to hell. The ushers are going to hell. The children teachers are going to hell. Our innocent members of churches are going to hell. Because they don't know the truth. It's only the truth that gives eternal life. The truth and the life. I am the truth and the life. I am the truth. I am the life. If you don't know the truth of Jesus, you don't have his life. So that's the situation. We moan. We cry. We sigh. We who know this. We who know the state of the churches dry bones in the valley yes now only god can revive his dead church he has gone beyond the thought of man see it now in ezekiel chapter 37 verse 3 to verse 6 ezekiel chapter 37 verse 3 to verse 6 and he said unto me son of man can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord God, thou knowest. <laughs> I cannot say anything about this. The state of these bones, I cannot say anything about it. I have not come across a situation like that before. I can... It's only you who created the heavens and the earth that can tell whether these bones can live. As for me, I cannot tell. No, I cannot. That the dry bones would live again was beyond the imagination of the prophet. Only God can know and do it. Truly, the state of the church is discouraging to the true man of God. The situation of some individuals, family members, relations, communities, local churches and denominations are discouraging and beyond imagination for the possibility of salvation. Only God can do it. They have gone far. A people that say they don't have need God in their lives. You come to them you open the Bible. Can I just say, close that Bible. Okay, be moving away. Be moving now. Be moving down. Get out. Somebody comes to you as you're getting out. Hey, can this man that is telling you not be saved? He says, hey, I cannot tell. I cannot tell. Whether he can still be saved, I'm not aware. That is the state. How can this church be revived? How can the Catholic church be revived? How can the Methodist church be revived? How can the Anglican church be revived? How can the, uh, the Orthodox church, the Evangelical, be revived? How can these Pentecostal rascals come back to the knowledge of truth and holiness? It's only God that knows. We don't know. 
It's a terrible step. Is it not the rapture we're expecting now? Brother, did they, are they showing any sign? Are they showing any sign? Are you not seeing more and more new ones coming up with, with new gymnastics, new deceits, new fashion? Hey, only thou knowest, O oh Lord. Mm. Why, God, I say you are the only one that knows because power belongs to you. You are the one that has the power. So, your power can do this. Lord, your power can do this. I said you are the only one that can do this because of the walking of your spirit. Not by might, not by the power of man, but by my spirit, seeth the Lord. That is the only thing. Otherwise, the state of the church at our time, what can we say? We have done as much as we can. We are not seeing as much result. We thought we would have gotten more than this. In fact, we thought they were ignorant. We thought that they didn't know. That when we told them the truth, they would rejoice. We told them the truth and they looked at us and said, you are, you are criticizing our pastors. We don't like you. You are gossiping. You are condemning. Brother, a man, a pastor that is killing human beings, I should say nothing to you about him. I should allow him because if I say anything to you about him, I'm condemning him. It's what he is doing, right? But that's how the, we just discovered that they're like that. Have these pastors charmed these people? But that's how it is. We say on, this thing belongs only to God. Thou knowest according to the testimonies of Scripture who show that God quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That is why we will not all together turn our eyes away, close our heart against the possibility of revival. Is it not Jesus who went to the graveyard of Lazarus and instructed that they should open the grave, roll away the stone? And Martha said, Lord, he was thinking at this time, the church is thinking now. The church is thinking now. Yes. You go to church and see the dances. A man carries a woman. They dance and turn around about. You say, yeah, you have gone that far. The church is thinking now. But did I not say unto you, if thou canst believe, thou would see the glory of God. That is what we are waiting now, my brethren. The glory of the Lord. Because he said so, we will believe. Amen? Amen. That revival will still come. Amen. That the Catholic church shall come up with wonderful people dressed in white with the glory of the Lord, baptized with the Holy Ghost, and flying to spread the gospel in the world, that the evangelical churches shall recover. They shall remember the old days. They shall remember the doctrines of holiness. They shall grab it, that the Pentecostal rascals shall become humble and look for Jesus. We believe! Because God says we should believe so that we shall see his glory. We will see it. 
I say we shall see, we shall see it. <laughs> and when he said this to Martha, he turned to Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth! Hey! Heaven shall shut down upon the earth. The rings of revival shall come down from heaven upon human beings. They shall come forth. They shall revive. In the name of Jesus. That is our hope and only hope. God is our hope. Yes. God is our home. But as I said, it requires human cooperation. Somebody must roll away that storm in faith. Forget about the stinking dead body. Somebody must cooperate with God to go and roll away that storm. So, let's see the human cooperation required to get these bones turned to human beings and live as a mighty soldier. Yes, Ezekiel chapter 31, 37, verse 1 to verse 10. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now God is giving us our role to play. Miracle of revival will happen. But we will have our role to play. We have pushed the matter over to God because we say as for us, we are not seeing possibility. These family members that have lived among them, all of them, then, that have never fully yielded to Jesus, how will they yield to Jesus? They are Muslims. They even say Jesus is not the way. How can this become born again? How? These Christians that have backslidden to the point they don't know how to pray. When they say, let us pray. What? You say, let's do what? Let's pray. They don't know how to do that. That's the most difficult thing for them. They know how to at least read the Bible, but how to pray? How do, do, how do people pray? Uh, uh, why, my, why are you praying and another person is praying? Wait for me to pray, pray now. You people are praying. You are confusing me. We are all praying together. Which one would God hear? <laughs> my people. These people that have lost the sense of prayer. How do you recover them? These people whose Bibles have been torn, they didn't buy a new one. They don't value Bible enough to have a new one. How then do you think they will be converted? These people that have even gone to marrying two, two, three wives and have given birth to children, how can they come back, do restitution and return only the first wife? Ah, the thing is looking complex. But God has instructed do what God says. The revival is in his hand. I say it's God that will do the revival. It's God that will do the revival. See it now. He, he was telling the man of God. He said, 
Say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The prophet, what did he say in verse 7? Can you read verse 7 as he said it there? One, two, go. Full stop. No, no, just stop there. Just stop there. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. Do what God commands you. And leave the matter to God. The world was in a greater state than this. The earth was without form and void. And darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. There was no, the earth was without form. And it was void. So if God says, he will do it. Believe him. And I will be very happy to see revival before the rapture. I will be very happy that God will visit your church and cause this righteousness we are practicing to be practiced there. I will be very happy that the Lord will raise up true ministers of the gospel. People that will give radical preaching. The preaching of Jonas that caused Nineveh with all their stubbornness and stuff-heartedness to repent. May God raise them up in your churches. May God meet you one of them. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. Something shocked him when he prophesied. Something shocked him. Don't take God ordinary. Why was Sarah doubting God when the Lord says, this time next year you are going to embrace the son? Behold, I am the Lord. Is there anything too difficult for me? Mary, God said you're going to give birth to a child. You don't know a woman. Don't bother about that. For with God, tell me everybody. Say it in the other way. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So that's why we trust in our God. So brother, let's wait for him. Let's sigh to heaven for him. For the church the way it is now. To know what can happen. Because it is God. The matter has turned to the hand of God. God has come himself. As, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Hey. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. The man recovered in his faith. The signs that happened in the valley made the man to say, it will work now. It is work now. It's just like a preacher that he was praying for the sick people. He didn't know whether anybody will be, sick or be, will be healed. He was just praying, God will it happen. Be healed in Jesus' name. Then somebody said, hey, I am healed. Hey. He said, hey. Oh, then the preacher will bow like blind eyes are open here today. The lame up shall rise up to walk here today. Because his faith has risen up. Praise the Lord. The faith of the man of God has risen up now. Because just a word. There was a shaking in the valley. There was a noise. And there was a movement. Bone to his bone. The man recovered. You will recover evangelism. All this evangelism you have dropped because the people are not responding. Now that God is saying, 
go back there. You will go back there. Yeah. I say you will go back there. Yeah. Exactly. Peter went back and enclosed a great quantity of fishes. He went back at the voice of the Lord. Nevertheless, at thy word, the Lord is sending us back. There shall be a difference. Your evangelism from this time forth shall be a difference. Yeah. Yes. And when I beheld, lo, sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no light breath in them. Ah. First one, God, they are still lifeless. So. <laughs> they are still lifeless. But God has started. Her fight began, and will I not finish it? God has begun it in your life, He will finish it. Amen. Then, verse 9, said He unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Professor, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus hear the Lord God, Come from the folk winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Glory. 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 Amen. Hear the voice of the Lord. Yet more, the Lord shall do one thing. Before the rapture, he shall raise up a body. He has begun. A, an exceeding great army for last time manifestation of the sons of God. In this world, demons must know it in this world. It's not after the rapture before demons will know. Demon, Satan and his demons must know that we are sons of God. Yeah. Witches and wizards must know in this world that we are here, that we are not coward, that we are not folding our tail. We are standing upright. We are sons of the living God. We shall demonstrate the power of God. The Muslim people shall know. The pagans shall know. Every kind of people, they shall see the shaking of the world because the Lord will do one thing more. Righteous army is rising up. Righteous army is rising up before the rapture to demonstrate to the world that he is the owner of the world. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Will you be in this army? I am one already. I say I am one already to demonstrate unto the principalities and powers the greatness of our God. Who told these people that we're nothing? That they're, they're, they're subjugating Christianity. They think they can silence Christianity. They are taking the children of God as if we are slaves. Can we be slaves in the creation of our God? Can we be slaves in the aid that the Lord gave to us? We will rise. I say we will rise and inherit it. We will do final demonstration. We are going to break the strongholds of darkness. We are going to take over the secret places of the devil. Hallelujah! That is it. That is it. That is it. Yes, your participation is required. In every act of salvation in the scripture, God has his part 
to play? Well, the man, the humans, have their power to play. God is ready to supply the power. He is ready to do the miracles. If man can believe and act out his word, God always wants someone he can use to achieve his will among men. He needs a preacher of righteousness, truth, and holiness. Can he find you? God needs a preacher. Because he used a son of man. Son of man, tell them this. God wants a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of truth. A preacher of holiness. One day for the last works of God on earth. A preacher of righteousness. A preacher of truth. A preacher of holiness. One day for exploits of the end time. A preacher of righteousness. A preacher of truth. A preacher of holiness. Again, I'm telling you, he wants people that will repent from their sins and believe in him and in his promises. As in Jonah, as in Nineveh, the people repented. They cried out and said, not even the beast. Animals should eat food. The baby at the, in the hands of their mother, at the back of their mother, should not eat. Let, let them cry. Let them cry out. Let them cry out. God wants you to cry out. God wants the churches to cry out. You cry out for these dead churches, dead congregation, dead ministers. We must cry out. God wants intercession. He wants you to pray and cry for these people. And cry for these people. Cry. Plead with God. For them, they are there in their churches. They are there in their cathedrals. They are there in their gymnastics. They are there. Cry. God is looking for them. For you to play your part for him. He wants intercessors. God wants the works of passionate leaders of the people. Who will reach out to them with God's word and turn their hearts back to him. God wants it. A revival is waiting. It has started. Can you take this revival to your church? Can you take this revival to your community? Can you take this revival to your nation? Can you take this revival to your continent? It is coming. It has started. You are sitting where revival has begun. I say you are sitting where revival has begun. You, are, you have come to where revival has begun. And it's going to spread. It's going to spread around the world. It's going to spread around the world. Oh Lord, start with me. That's your prayer. Oh Lord, start with me. Oh Lord, begin with me. That's why you should say, Oh God, begin with me. Let the power come on you now. Oh Lord, begin with me. Oh Lord, begin with me. Oh Lord, begin with me. That's your prayer now. That's your prayer now. Oh Lord, begin with me. Oh Lord, begin with me. Oh Lord, start with me. Oh Lord, start with me. Revival. You need it. You need it. This end time revival. It must come. Dead churches must rise. Dead churches must rise. Dead churches must rise. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. The dead church shall live. Oh Lord, but start with me. Jesus, begin with me. I will go for you, Lord. I will go for you, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send But start with me. 
Jesus begin with me. I will go for you, Lord. I will go for you, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Say. Send me, Lord. Send me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let the power of the Lord begin with us. Let us start with us. Let us have revival. Let the people that are dead among us arrive. Wake up. Yes. Let the people that are dead wake up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It is not economic revival God is bringing to the churches, it is not political revival. God is bringing to the churches. It is spiritual revival. Not for those who are in the flesh. Those that will be in the spirit. This revival, the Lord will pick from here and there and there and there. They shall be great crowd. They shall be great crowd. They shall be great crowd. As many as are willing, the Lord shall give it to them. Now, we're going to pray. We'll take good time to pray. But you want to come to the pulpit here, to the front to do this, your prayer. You know how dry you have been. You want to come here. Come and kneel down here and pray through. Come to the front. Kneel down here. But you who can stand there, nothing is wrong. But there are people who feel they must come in. Come in further. Come in because they want to pray through. They want to pray through. Come, come, move forward, move forward, give room for others. Yes. Oh Lord, but start with me. Jesus, begin with me. I will go for you, Lord. I will go for you. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me, Lord. Send me. Lift up the voice to the God of heaven. Tell the Lord, let him start with you. Mm. Let him start with you. Worship. Worship. Yay! Let God begin revival in your life. Oh. Let the power of revival come upon your life. Oh Lord, but start with me. Jesus, begin with me. I will go for you, Lord. I will go for you, Lord. Yeah. 
we need your power. God, we need your power. Quicken us. Break the yoke. Destroy the, the powers of darkness. Terminate them in Jesus' name. By your power, burn them with fire. 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 To the glory of your name. Burn them with fire. Terminate them. Let fire catch 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 them. Let fire consume them. Let fire consume them. Break you to pieces. Let fire break you down. Break you down. Let fire break you down. Let fire break you down. Yes. Let fire break you down. 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 Let fire destroy. Destroy the power of darkness. You are dead. You are dead. You are dead. You are dead in the presence of God. Papa. You are dead. You are dead. You are dead. 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 Broken down by the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. By the cross of Jesus. 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 You're broken. You're broken. You're broken. You're broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire consume you. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. Let fire come down. Break that power. Break it. Break it. Break that power. Break it. Break it. Fire. Break the, the forces in the life of the people. Break the forces. 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 Hallelujah. Revival must come. 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 Revival. 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 Whoa! Oh Lord, send a revival! Oh Lord, send a revival! Dry bones arise! Dry bones arise! Dry bones arise! Dry bones arise! Oh Lord, they are very dry! Let them leave! 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 Let them leave. Let them leave. Jesus, your fire, your fire. Let them leave. Let them leave. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall life again. Dry bones shall rise again. 
Jai Bunsha rise again. Oh Lord, send down your power, not by might, not by power, but by the, your spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Jesus, do special work. Jesus, do special work. Jesus, in the lives of your people. Do special work in the lives of your people. Do special work in the lives of your people. Dry bones, live again. Dry bones, live again. Dry bones, live again. Dry bones, live again. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. Oh Jehovah, you are able to do all things. You are able, able. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. The bone shall live again. The bone shall live again. Dry bone shall rise again. The bone shall rise again. Lord Jehovah, you are able to do all things. You are able, able. The bone shall rise again. The bone shall rise again. The bone shall rise again. Dead bones shall live again. The bones shall live again. Lord Jehovah, you are able to do all things. You are able, able. The bones shall live again. The bones shall live again. The bones shall live again. Dead bones shall rise again. The bones shall live again. Dry bones shall rise again, dry bones shall rise again. Lord Jehovah, you are able to do all things. You are able, able, dry bones shall rise again, 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 dry bones shall rise again. Dead bones shall rise again. Dead bones shall rise again. Dead bones shall rise again. The bones shall rise again. The bones shall live again. The bones shall rise again. Dead bones shall live again. The bones shall. Your bones shall rise. Your bones shall rise. Call upon God. Call upon God. Call upon God. Let the Lord revive you. Let the Lord revive you. Let the Lord revive you. Let the Lord bring you back to life. The Lord bring you back to life. Your love is dry. Prayer life is dry. Devotional life is dry. The church is in the open valley. Very dry. Very dry. God, remember your church. God, Remember your church. Let the Holy Ghost do it in the church and in the churches. Let God bring you back to life. Let God bring you back to life. 
Let God make you alive. Jesus name we pray you stand up on your feet raise up your hands to heaven revival Pentecostal revival we need it Lord Father, revival, Pentecostal revival, we need a revival, Pentecostal revival, we need it, Lord. I need it, Lord. Jesus One more time Everybody revival With your hands raised up, I'm not only praying for you, but for the churches of Christ. You represent them. You came from among them. The Lord begin with you. The Lord do it at home also. Almighty Father, it is a true matter. If it so disturbs us, who are human beings? How much more God? Who sees Better than we do, universal. The churches have fallen. God, they are really dry bones in the open valley. These ones came from among them. Some of them too are dry. Oh Lord, do your miracle in their life in Jesus' name. Let them revive and become alive in Jesus' name. Let the spirit of the church come into their lives. Let them become vibrant. Let the ministers become flames of fire. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, remember the churches. The local churches. The denominational churches. The national churches. The international churches. Let revival enter into them. Let revival enter into them. Let the booth start shaking. Let the booth start shaking. Let everything work out for the revival. Oh, yeah, churches, receive the work of God. Rise up and live in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
follow. Do it. Amen. Let today begin it. Amen. Then they will see it over there. Amen. It is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Dry bones shall rise again. Go and sit down. I say, dry bones shall rise again. Lord Jehovah. Oh, yes, dead bull shall live again. I say, dead bull shall live again. Lord Jehovah. My boon shall live again. Your boon. My boon shall rise again. Oh yes, oh Jehovah. I say your bones shall live again. I say your bones shall rise again. 